Well, my friends, if you've been following Android News, then you would know there's been a rather intense story we've been following for months now. If you remember, Google made a big announcement to sideloading recently where all developers, even those outside of the Play Store, would have to verify their identity in order to have their app become installable on Android devices, which did cause quite a bit of backlash from all sides of the community, citing that this would effectively kill sideloading, stifle innovation for developers, and overall diminish one of the biggest reasons people fell in love with Android in the first place. Well, after a few months of what seems like excessive feedback from the community, Google has announced some changes on these restrictions that can hopefully satisfy everyone, and it seems like sideloading has been saved, at least to some degree. This is an ongoing situation that we're going to be covering for quite some time now, so if you want to stay up to date, please subscribe to the 95 Google YouTube channel because we are going to keep covering these stories as they come up. The reason this story even happened in the first place is because a few months back, Google announced new restrictions on sideloading apps. Their publicly stated reasons are primarily security-based according to their latest blogs, where they cite situations where scammers call victims, use social engineering to claim their bank account is compromised, and then convince them to download a quote-unquote verification apps of sorts, which is really malware. And then the scammer drains the bank account. Apparently, according to Google, this type of attack was a growing trend that was so common they had to make some kind of changes. It seems like it would happen all too often where Google would block these malware ridden apps and then these bad actors would just make new ones, which is what Google calls an endless game of whack-a-mole, making it seem like this is a situation that requires them to constantly monitor these type of apps, which is probably a costly and time-consuming process. So the solution was to make it significantly harder for these bad actors to get into the ecosystem by forcing them to use a real accountable identity, which if you think about it does make sense. If these scammers keep publishing new apps back to back, having each one face a real risk by naming themselves will probably reduce the amount of people willing to start the scam in the first place. It's also probably more difficult to keep finding verifiable identities over and over and over again, not to mention if they do decide to verify themselves and steal hundreds of thousands of dollars, let's say, it's probably a lot easier to press charges. And apparently, Google has already seen success with this with the developer verification process on the Google Play Store. To be clear, I'm sure there are some other motives for this entire process, but the security angle is the one that's the most visible. The problem is, while it's true a lot of scammers use sideloading in such a negative way, there are also a lot of members of the core Android community that use sideloading as a way to further engage with the hobby. They might install apps not on the Play Store like Fortnite, third-party app stores like F-Droid, apps Google might not necessarily love like emulators or ad blockers. They can also easily roll back an update by installing an older version of an app if a new update causes issues. You can download apps not available in your country, or if you're a developer, you can sideload your own apps to test them out. There are a lot of natural, helpful use cases aside from scamming. Even if the trade-off is based on security, a lot of users greatly appreciate the freedom and control of being able to install what they want, when they want, how they want. And we've definitely seen that feedback loudly since this announcement. Every article, every YouTube video, tweet, or social media post, you can always find someone somewhere mentioning this whole sideloading situation. It got to the point where it seems like Google had to do something about it. So about three months after that initial controversial announcement, Google made a blog post on the Android developers page with an update on the next steps. From what we're reading here, it seems like Google is effectively creating a two-track system. For the experienced users out there, there will be a new quote-unquote advanced flow that will allow people like developers and power users to accept the risks and install unverified apps from unverified developers. This is for people who are well-versed in the nature of scamming and social engineering, people who are well aware of how to protect themselves online, which I do think is a lot of us, honestly. Me personally, if someone calls me saying that they're from my bank and tells me to install a new app to have access to my account, I am literally going to laugh in their face, and I'm sure a lot of you guys would too. And for the students and hobbyists out there, Google is creating a dedicated account type where you can test your apps on a limited number of devices without needing to go through the whole verification process. For everyone else, the original plan still remains, where they can install apps outside the Play Store, but only from verified developers. This is a solution Google is presenting so they can have it both ways and satisfy as many people as possible, and very likely it's a direct response 
response to the backlash from the core enthusiasts, and I'm glad to see that they're offering up a solution like this. The issue is, right now, we don't really know what this advanced user flow is going to look like. Google hasn't shared any specific details in their blog posts yet. All we know is that it's being built to allow developers and power users to accept the risks and install unverified apps. So it's likely to include clear warnings to make sure the user fully understands what they're doing and ultimately will still put the choice to install that unverified app in the hands of the user. Again, all we know is that Google is gathering early feedback on the design of this feature and will share more details in the coming months. So if you want to get involved, I would heavily encourage you to sign up for the early access period so you can have your say in how it works. And at this point, I'm not really too sure how to feel about this whole situation. The first thought that comes to my mind is we do have to give credit where it's due. Thank you, Google, for considering that feedback of the enthusiasts out there. I know it's easy to get cynical, but this is a genuine case where the community's voice was heard and it did force a positive change. But I will say I'm also cautiously optimistic. On one hand, this two-track system on paper is the perfect compromise. It achieves Google's stated goal of protecting the vast majority of users, the people who are unfortunately more vulnerable to these social engineering type scams, by putting up a strong verified wall by default. And on the other hand, it acknowledges the people who make Android so great, the hobbyists, the power users, the developers, and gives them a dedicated process Process to continue their work. My caution comes from the implementation of the system. I'm more worried about how Google is going to define an experienced user. Is it going to be per account? Is it based on a questionnaire? Who even decides what an experienced user is? Is this a process that's going to require manual approval by someone at Google? Or is this going to be a situation where I have to just enable a setting buried deep in the operating system or connect my phone to a PC maybe for verification of some kind? Right now, we just don't know how it's going to work, and that's where my concerns mainly come from the most. That said, the optimistic side of me hopes that it's just a one-time, clear-as-day warning page, much like the install from unknown sources toggle we already have, but maybe with a few extra steps and with a stronger, quote, I am an expert and accept all risks type of checkbox. Something you do once and the system trusts you from there on out to go about your business. So my friends, there you have it, a short video today on where we stand when it comes to this whole sideloading situation. Honestly, this is a story that I've never expected to cover in such great detail, and yet here we are. It's one of the many features that makes Android so special, and I'm genuinely hopeful Google will get this right and strike that difficult balance between security for the masses and the freedom for those who need it. But I'm really curious to hear your thoughts now. If you're someone that sideload often, what do you think of the concept of this new two-track system? Do you think it's a fair compromise? And more importantly, Importantly, what do you hope this new advanced flow will actually look like? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. Until next time, this has been Jordan Floyd from 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.